All right, welcome back. Uh, episode two now of Jumcraft. I got my buddy Nick here with me. Hello. Nick is uh, doing a playthrough of Dark Souls. He was good enough to have me on a couple episodes, so I thought I'd return the favor by forcing him to sit and watch me play this game. These handcuffs are pretty uncomfortable, but I'm still looking forward to it. What did I say about the handcuffs? <laughs> we don't talk about that. Sorry, it's a private thing. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, uh, where we left off last time was I was being murdered in my sleep by a zombie. And uh, I did put a little note on there to see if anyone could spot my fatal mistake. Um, I, am, I I haven't uh, actually seen an account, so I don't think anyone has yet, but uh, it's, it's the door. The door was my fatal mistake. And this is something that uh, I recognized pretty much as soon as the zombie started punching the life out of me. Um, I had just read something about this on the forum. And I didn't even think about it. I'll put this together. So I'm going to do, put a door together, and make a little demonstration for y'all. Yeah, I'm curious about this. So you can see, if you, if you remember from the last time, I had a window over here instead. Yeah. And if you're real keen, you'll notice that the hinge of the door is on the opposite side. So if I, I would define this as the front uh, of the door, the hinge is on the left. Now, I originally put this together, I had a window here, and the hinge was on the right. Right. And that was the problem. And I actually need a second door. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo. And doors do not stack. So, you know. And I left my door open. God damn it. I'm curious to see how you're going to avoid this issue, because that was pretty terrifying. It's actually, it's pretty straightforward how to avoid it, and it's a situation that will, will almost never come up until you start making bigger structures. Alright, so, just straight out, drop a door down. Hang on, I guess I gotta break the snow first. Okay, so notice you put a door down, nothing around it, and you get what I call the regular normal door with the hinge on the left-hand side. Now, if I place a door down next to it, it'll make a... Uh, like a double door? Yeah. Cool. And so you have your hinge on the right-hand side. All right, so they, they pretty much function the same. You know, I can't get through either of them. You know, so they're both they're both closed, but not really. Uh, what I found out, and then actually someone else found out, uh, was that the second half, the right hinged part of the double door, is kind of open. So I'm gonna demonstrate this by even when it's like that. visually closed. Yeah, yeah, but it only it only really comes up when you're trying to sleep. It sees it as oh. an entryway. Oh. So I'm, I'm gonna make a pressure plate here, and this is one of a number of things that you can do to create power in the game, and you can use that power to control uh, items. Uh, oh, starting cool. out, pretty much just controlling doors. So I'm gonna put this right in front, and if I walk on that. The door opens. And so it, it controls the one that it's directly in front of then? Yeah, there's there's specific rules the way these circuits work, and I, I don't have any redstone yet. There's a material called redstone uh, that lets you harvest this redstone powder, and it works kind of like electrical circuitry to run circuits and create things. Oh. Um, so putting that down, it is in the off state now. I stand on it, it goes on, this opens. It's a momentary switch, so as soon as I step off, it closes again. So that's on that one. Now, if I put it in front of this door, it opens right away. Oh. And this is still in the, the off state. If I turn it on, the door closes. Because it's apparently just kind of a mirrored copy of this. Right. Now, when you go to sleep at night, the game looks at where you're at and determines if there is any way that uh, a zombie or a skeleton could get in, can could get at you. And if it finds a way, it'll drop one in there and attack you and wake you up in the night. Oh. And even though this door is shut, because of this, that part of the game considers this open and will let stuff just pop in and punch you to death. So it has something to do with how doors are implemented and the fact that a double door, like one side of it is actually a mirrored version in the code right. of the other side. So and that, so I'm guessing that also applies to states. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So... Even though the door looked closed, it actually considered it open as far as letting a zombie in to kill me. Right. And what I had read was that, and I haven't tried this myself because I didn't want to just keep getting woken up by mm. a zombie and killed, is if you go to sleep at night, open your door. Oh. And, and nothing will interrupt you. 
because it, it'll be the inverse state. Yeah, because now it thinks it's closed, apparently. Right. Um, very strange. That's that's pretty bizarre. So, yeah, that, uh, that kind of scared the crap out of me. That's pretty cool, though, you found a solution for that. Yeah. It's kind uh, of like lateral thinking in this game that I'm totally incapable of. Now, the reason, I should add, the reason that it did show up on the right-hand side was because of the wall that I had built. Right. And if you have, you know, like this, on both sides, you get the regular door. Right. But if you leave uh, an opening, the hinge just kind of natu naturally uh, applies itself to the other side. So if I take this side out here, put that door down, I get oh. the second half. And actually, that there are some um, mechanisms, Rube Goldberg-esque mechanisms you can build in this game. Um, that rely on having the doors set on certain angles, so that's knowledge that will come in handy later. Yeah, that's kind of huge. If you're going to have a secure dwelling, you really ought to know about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, honestly, I'm surprised before I had read that I never really ran into that, because I usually, when I build something, I build it big enough to have a double door on it. Right. Uh, I've never really been woken up. Uh, it won't always happen. You're, you're, it's not like a 100% guarantee that something's going to wake you up if there's a way in. Mm -hmm. um, but it always can yeah, if it, the hinge is on the right. Right? It, right. Okay. If it's on the right facing the okay. the front of it. So um, leave your door open if the hinge is on the right. This is what we've learned here, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah, if you, yeah if, if you have a double door. If you don't have a double door, there's no real reason unless aesthetically to have it on the right. So just make sure you I gotcha. construct carefully. Also, I had a little step here. This is a... Uh, a stone or like a, a half couple block? stone. Mm -hmm. It's a slab. Oh, okay. Um, half slab sometimes. Sometimes I use names that don't line up with these tooltip names. And this is because in earlier versions of the game they didn't have actual official names. There was no tooltip. Right. And so you just kind of cooked up name. People cooked up names on your own. And so they're kind of the established <laughs> names for stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I, you're using some community naming schemes that don't particularly line up with what the developers right. later it, I, thought. I go back and forth on stuff. Most of it's pretty pretty much the same, but there's some things that. You know, the slabs, I still call half slabs. Um, you can make those just by dropping three down across. You can hmm. make these out of cobblestone, uh, regular stone, sandstone, and wood. Can you do it with wool? Uh, no. Okay. No, you cannot. So, put these away, put that away. And it is starting to get dark out. The Time. night descends. Yeah, it moves It moves pretty quick. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say it's 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes of daytime. Uh, and it's not really 10 minutes of nighttime, what they call it, like the full night. Because you have this interlude of dawn and dusk. So it's like 7 minutes mm -hmm. of nighttime that's dark enough for stuff to spawn. Okay. Um, but yeah, time can move pretty quickly. And uh, you, know, you will find if you... If you really enjoy playing this game, it's very easy to pass through many 20-minute days uh, in one session of this game uh, in one day IRL. All right. And if you're not sure what IRL stands for, then you probably have more going on in real life <laughs> than I do. Well played, sir. And I, I'd also like to add, you know, I, I really am digging on this this dungeon uh, dungeon abode. I feel like a, a big man. Sleeping next to the spider block. Yeah, it's pretty badass, man. It's uh, as Nick can attest. This really isn't much far off, and it's actually a little bit nicer than the actual dungeon that I live in, and I'm, I'm sitting in right now. The cave that we're currently dwelling in. Yes. IRL. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, the you know, the only plus side that my actual place has over this is my adorable little dog. <coughs> right. Um, and there are dogs in the game. There's wolves that you can tame and find. I haven't found any yet. But uh, once I do, I will be able to have the equivalent of my dog in this game, which makes it easier for me to spend less time with my real dog right. and feel less guilty about having him just sit and stare at me. And... Really like a simulation of real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Cause, I think that's healthy. You know, I, I think this, this is better a, than real life. It's a good idea psychologically, I think. I, w I want to live in the Matrix. Same. Um, which no. pill is that, the red or the blue pill? Uh, puce. The puce pill? That, that is the trick to it. The little known puce pill? You, you have to have the puce pill. Yeah. If they don't offer you that, then you're just not cool enough to be in the club. Oh, okay. Same learning things. 
that's uh, that's what I'm all about here. Sweet but, uh, education. Yes, education and murdering people. pigs. Those are my, my two goals. Uh, now astute viewers will notice that there's more vine here. Oh, yeah, that's bigger than it was last video. Mm, I nice. didn't add more. It uh, it just grows. It'll grow on its own. And if you want, which I do want, you can uh, you know trim a little bit off here and plant some more. So it's renewable in that sense. You can always mm -hmm. harvest what has grown. I mean, it's yeah. You're infinitely gaining interest on that. That's pretty cool. And that's that's one thing I really, really love in this game and get kind of obsessive about uh, is renewable resources. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I like planting trees. I like having tree farms. I like resources that I can just continue to uh, reproduce over and over again. I, I don't know what it is. It just kind of fascinates me. Well, I mean, that's kind of what this game's all about, right? I mean, you kind of set your own goals and you have your own priorities, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it's it is what you take from it, right? So it's uh it's night time out. It's a little spooky. Uh, I've got a decent amount of wood here, so I'm gonna build with that. And what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna kind of wall myself in here a little bit. Um, I just start here, so I have a little bit more safe area to work with. Are you just kind of organically building your dwelling into wherever is most convenient, and then you'll kind of build off of it from there, or do you have plans for like a? I, you know, I had put some thought into uh, actually constructing, uh, you know, a, a proper building, mm -hmm. proper domicile. Uh, but that's another thing I really dig on in this game is just kind of going off of what is already there. Right. And building off of that, so I don't want to light this up. I personally think that's a lot more interesting. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I like just working with what, what already exists and yeah. just kind of digging into it. Kind of more like you would out. if you were actually out here, Yeah. you know, trying to survive. I mean, you just build into the land itself. So I can span that out a little bit. Get this snow. I had a question about snow. Um, yes. Can you melt it to turn it into water, or does it just melt and not become another... Well, that's a good question. Um, you can melt snow. Uh, I don't... Make a snow block, I can show you that. Uh, but it doesn't turn into water. Mm. Uh, snow itself will just melt if it is close enough to a light source, I think within two or three squares of like a torch. Any light source that isn't the sun or something like that? Right, right. right. Any like man-made light source okay. or like lava, anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, and this will only melt Jack-o'-lanterns too, that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so snow melts and it just goes away. I don't, I don't know if it still does or if it stopped. So a lot of things change in the game, but I'm pretty sure eventually this will go away. It doesn't always happen instantly. Hmm. If there was snow on the ground, you would see it um, melt around this, and then it won't uh, like regenerate Like if it snows, because there's weather in this game. There's snow and there's rain. If it snows, snow regenerates on the ground, right. except around this torch. Um, so this, won't, this will melt. And I'm just going to pick that up, cause even though I've got an endless amount of snow outside... Get OCD about my resources <laughs> here. Um, the snow just melts and goes away. Now ice will turn back into water. And ice so, will. Ice okay. will because ice is just a fro frozen block of water. Gotcha. So if you melt that, it turns back into water. Mm. Um, so that can be. I, I'm planning on building a, a structure with uh, ice for the walls. Mm -hmm. And there's a way you can you can game that because you can't easily pick it up or move it. There, there's ways to do it. Neither of which I have access to right now. Right. Um, so it's it's easy. You can just lay out water, and if it's exposed to the sun in the snowy area, it will freeze into ice, and you just kind of layer up on that. Oh, okay. um, my only concern with that, the construction of that, is if I put torches around it to light up the area, if my walls are just going to melt out and flood my shit up. Yeah, it's going to take quite some time, I would imagine, to yeah create a building that way. Yeah, I will more than likely just do that um, around video recordings so that people <laughs> yeah. don't have to watch me staring at ice. No, watching ice literally form. <laughs> I broke my, my pick. So I think uh, time for iron or yeah I think I'm going to upgrade, <laughs> upgrade my shiz. My three iron and a couple sticks. 
That is so cool how you got all those resources. I mean, you know, I watched your, your first video and it seemed like you had a really solid variety of resources pretty quickly. Very snappy play. It, it's really, it's a combination of, of luck and knowing what to look for. Right. It's mostly luck when you generate a new world. Um, Which is partly why this is so cool. You have to use yeah. what you have. If, if you know what you're looking for, it's a little easier to find. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, if you want coal and iron you have to dig a little bit into the ground but if you just walk around for a while and find uh any area where there's stone mm -hmm. um you're likely to find something iron or coal pretty close to the surface at some point it, you don't always get lucky i got lucky with this um sometimes you have to dig down but you knew what you were looking for yeah I mean, yeah i i played a ton of this so i can tell yeah. <laughs> um so i'm just kind of clearing out space here make a little downward space here. I might make a farm in here and grow some weed. In fact, I, I will do that. Your performance is really solid on this game right now, like just, you know, CPU-wise. I feel like I have a fairly beefy system, but man, it, it doesn't move at this clip. You know, it, it's surprising to me how resource-intensive this game can be. Oh, Java. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, considering how simple it all looks, but I, I've seen a lot of systems. I know my old computer, which was going... It was a pretty uh, pretty old system. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't that great sometimes, and I they have to turn down render settings. Yeah. And I'm being excessive with my torches here. I, mean, I want to say, if you're not sure how the lighting works in this, you don't need to go this crazy um, with the torches. I just, you know, for aesthetic reasons, yeah, it looks I like cool. doing that. I like yeah. balanced stuff. Um, yeah, all the light sources, which are torches... Uh, jack lanterns, which is where you can get a pumpkin, you can shove a torch inside, make a jack lantern. Um, you lava. see that in your crafting interface? You just put yeah, like a torch you just, with a pumpkin. You know, pumpkin, torch, okay. jack lantern. Um, I know having, so little about this game, despite having played it for you know a few hours back in earlier releases. So a lot of this is new for me. It's you really you know the game has no built-in instructions really. Um, there's there's guidelines out there on the internet, but there's nothing that's really. Oh, sounds like it's sunlight. Yeah. I really should have a sunlight down here. Some creepies out, uh, out yonder. Yeah, you can hear our terrifying sounds. Should be able to hear zombies in pain, burning in the sun. <laughs> I think I'm only like two blocks beneath the surface. Where I am, and how I know is listening to the sound of the dirt. What? Yeah, you can tell from the sound of the dirt. So if you listen to that distinctive sound of breaking it. Listen to this. Oh. It's a different sound, because that's actually a grass block. And grass, you only get at the surface, so... Shit, I never would have thought of that, ever. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's okay. really cool. Play, play almost too much of this. It's a pro tip. So I'm going to poke a window out here. I've kind of... Hello! You fucking cow. <laughs> kind of screwed myself a little bit, because I have no way to see outside. There could be a creeper, like, right around the corner there. Now, that's, that's if it was right do. next to you, like, one block away on the other ed like, the edge of that window, the outside edge, would it be able to... Would that be enough proximity to trigger it to explode on you? I want to say yes, but not in all cases. Mm. Um, for the most part, if you're, you know, if there's something intervening, they won't blow up, but I, I think if they, if it stood, like, if that block was out yeah. of the way and it stood right there, it's looking right at me, I think it would start its countdown. Oh, okay. And you could back away real quick. And it'll stop. And it'll stop. Um, it's got like a specific time length, so uh, you know I I don't even know what the time length is for sure because usually I'm just running, screaming in terror, panicking, or blindly, getting yeah. blown up. Yeah. Let's just you know throw a time out like five seconds as like a five second countdown. Right. So if it starts counting down, you run away. Um, it'll start counting backwards. So, oh. Right, so you have to, if you let it go too long, even if you get away, it's still going to blow up, which is actually kind of useful if you don't have any good means to fight them, and you don't care if it blows a hole in something. Yeah. Just get close enough to let its countdown run, and then run real quick. It takes right. a little practice um, to not get blown up, but uh, well, I got those doors. See, I always assumed the, um, like the internal timer on the creepers was kind of a binary thing. I didn't realize it was like a bipolar sort of like analog counter going back and forth depending on your proximity, I guess you're saying? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the proximity thing is binary, but everything else is like a smoothly running timer back and forth. Yeah, they'll, they'll cool down if you get away from them. Nice. So I'm going to pop up here. That's good to know. Since it was dark enough. Uh, I might still be around. Creepers do eventually despawn and just kind of disappear. 
uh, after enough time has passed, but it's not it's not an automatic thing. They don't die. Um, so if I'd gone outside right when all the zombies are dying or after they died, the chances are good there'd still be creepers around. Right. Waiting. I've seen that many times in my older games. And they they'll spawn in uh, a pretty big range around you. Uh, and they'll continue to spawn until the limit has reached, which I think is in the hundreds, or uh, or it gets too bright. God, it's so cool to see the world building itself yeah. off in the distance. I mean, it really gives you a sense of the scope of this game. It's just immense. It it really is, and it's it's pretty much infinite now. Um, there used to be what the people refer to as the far lands, which were if you um, which were um, English. If you traveled um, in a far enough distance, you would reach a point where the world generation got jacked up, and it would uh, there'd just be like cliffs, and, and it would be all screwed up. You could just fall into the void beneath the world and, and die horribly. Uh, and they changed that so that you don't you don't run into that anymore. Right. Um, so the world is effectively. Like I, I want to say it's thing. effectively infinite, but yeah. I think there is a limit, but it's something ridiculous like eight times the surface area of the Earth or more. Um, so you're, you're kind of unlikely to run into that limit. Man, we just take a step versions. back and think about that simple fact, though, that you can just... Every time you start a new world, whether it's through a seed or just whatever, you're effectively creating this huge set of ecosystems that oh, yeah. is, like, is effectively a whole world. Uh... I was always amazed by games like, say, Just Cause 2, which has a huge world, but I mean, it's static. And this is this is why I need this is why I need the uh, <laughs> that farm because I'm trying to do something with this cow here. Murder him. Um, you know, I don't see a lot of cows around. I kind of want to maintain a breeding pair, so I was gonna get your breed on. I was gonna bury him in the earth, <laughs> and I think I'm still planning on doing that. Are you gonna be a disreputable cow breeder? Uh, no, sort of. No, don't walk away. Don't walk away. I'm trying to talk to you here, son. Get in your hole. Oh, there you go. Stay put. You're, you're, you don't get to get out. <laughs> I get to leave. You don't. Oh, you, oh, you man. Jumping piece of. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Some clutch movement All right, there. That's dude. it. I'm just. Don't you run from me. Well, you know what? That's what he gets. I got an achievement for it, too. Fuck that guy. Delightful. So what I got from him was some raw beef and leather. And uh, I can cook that into steak and eat that, and it is delicious. Delicious. And I can use this leather to make armor, uh, but it will take a lot, so I can't do anything with the individual piece that I got. And now I've got my my hole here and no animals to put in it, so... This isn't really uh, any kind of mechanic of the game. This is... It's just something I do. I, I won't explain it. I won't even try to explain it. Uh, Suffice to say, you're kind of a messed up person. Uh, Why? <laughs> I oh, just, uh, that's a mess. That's something a messed up person. No, would no, do. come on now. That's, that's Look, fucked up. I'm, I'm, and hostile mobs don't normally attack animals unless right. they're caught in the crossfire. Right. But I'm still uncomfortable with the idea of all these innocent animals mm. wandering around. When there's skeletons and shit wanted, they're terrified. Right. So I bury them mm. in the earth so that um, they're safe. Yeah, that and, like, terrified pork tastes better. I, you know, maybe, maybe so. Um, and also I get that sweet oinking sound, so I have, like, a carpet of oinks. A carpet of oinks. Yeah. Um, if I had some wheat, I could get them to follow me, and this would make this task a lot easier. So... I guess that's all. So you can lure it. animals around with food? Oh, uh, yes. If you have wheat, you can get them to follow you. Oh, man, that is so and, cool. And it's... With the latest updates, animals are persistent. They used to spawn, you know, once a day and once a, at night in certain, like, areas with grass that uh, were lit up enough. Now they're just persistent. So when an area generates, it plops animals in, and then that's all that gets. So if I just went around and killed all these pigs around here... Yeah. Um, I would have no pigs, and I'd have to go further and further out to get more pigs. Hmm. So they, they changed that, and they also added breeding so you can breed the animals. And so you can get some wheat and get them to follow you into an enclosed area, and then you can breed them in there, uh, which I will do once I have wheat. So 
they basically created a scarcity of a resource and mm-hmm. then gave you a cool way to make it renewable. So that's probably right up your alley. Then. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, this all came about when they added uh, the hunger system. This food just used to heal you, and now you have a separate uh, mechanic to deal with there. So now food is a lot more of a resource. Yeah, what... I mean, this this might be kind of outside of the scope of just describing in one video, but what's up with the food now? I mean, like, it just used to heal you, and that's kind of when I stopped playing. Right. The food used to just heal you, you know, pop back hearts. There was a lot of differences. Um, For one, food only healed you. There was no hunger to deal with, and different foods would heal you different amounts. Food also didn't use to stack at all. So each piece of uh, pork... Or chop. Um, take one spot. Yeah, it would take one spot. and That I remember. And so if you wanted to carry a bunch of food with you, you'd have to eat up a lot of your uh, limited inventory here. Uh, and the only way you could stack food was with wheat, because you could stack wheat itself up to 64. Oh, okay. And then you could you know, carry with you a crafting table and chop that yeah. down and make bread. Make bread, right. So you could carry more food, but it wasn't as convenient because if you got in a fight, you were, to, you were going to want to eat something real quick, and you couldn't do that with the bread in mm. that way. So now they added hunger. Now they added food that stacks. Um, what also changed was this used to be pork chop. And, that man, it doesn't look like a pork chop. That looks, that looks <laughs> pretty good. They, they just kind of recolored it for yeah. this. Because Palette swapped. Right. The only animal that dropped uh, meat before they added hunger was pigs. Okay. So you, you would just... Always you just leather from cows. Out. Always leather from cows. Chickens drop feathers. Um, now cows drop beef and chicken drops chicken. Um, sheep... I, I thought I saw something a while ago about mutton from sheep, but they don't really? drop any mutton. It's still just wool. Okay. Um, and cows are actually a better source of food, a more reliable source of food than pigs. Mm-hmm. Pigs drop zero to two pork chops when you kill them. Right. So a fair amount of time you kill them, you don't get anything uh, except experience, which I don't think I've mentioned at all. Um, but cows will drop like at least one beef, I believe. So killing cows will net you more food um, and the leather, and you can also milk them. So cows are all in all more efficient. It's also why I hate pigs, because they're just useless, lazy bastards. So what is the interaction between the hunger bar and health? All right. Well, if there is any. There is. And I'm going to eat some uh, some pork chop here because my hunger is getting low. If your hunger bar is, I believe, down one notch mm-hmm. or, or less, like a half notch, whatever, um, one shank, you're one shank shy of a, of a full belly, uh, you will regenerate health. Okay. So that's how you get your health back. If it goes lower than that, your health stops regenerating. Um, if it gets low enough, which I believe low enough is just gone, um, you'll start to starve to death. Oh, you'll okay. You'll continue to take damage similar to if you were drowning. Um, so hunger is, hunger is important. Hunger matters now. Food used to just be to keep your health up, right, and you could healing. just wander yeah. around forever, and if you never got in a fight, never fell, you never had to eat anything. Now you have to have food. You have to keep that going, unless you're playing on Peaceful. If you play in Peaceful, none of that stuff matters. Um, it's such an interesting way to incorporate a regenerating health system into a game, mm-hmm. rather than this sort of ham-fisted approach of just making it regen for the sake of regen. Now they have it interacting with like a more realistic hunger system. That's cool. Going to... I want to start my wheat farm and get some water. Man, the new lighting model in this game There's still water. blows me away. I'm, I'm still thinking back to the uh, earlier versions where it was just like, if you have a light source down, then that block is lit up, and that's about it. All right, so you see I just broke that ice. It's the mm-hmm. same thing happens if it melts. It turned back into a source block of water. So I'm going to carry this back home so I can start my wheat farming. Nice. Keep start an underground wheat mm-hmm. farm? Yes. Uh, as long as it's lit up, you don't need sunlight, although I think it grows a little bit quicker if you have sunlight. Oh, that's, that's uh, a cool little touch. But in this area, I wouldn't build this above surface anyway because the water, if it's exposed directly to the air above, mm-hmm. um, it will refreeze into ice. Okay. So I At least in this biome? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, only in the, the snow biome. If you were out in like a swamp or a grassland or something, right. then the water would obviously just stay as water. Right. And okay. I don't think I went into the what biome means, what yeah. that is. 
Um, there's different biomes in the game, and the biome is just like a uh, um, climate terrain area. So this is a snow biome. Uh, I mean, you've got snow, you've got a certain type of trees. Um, where I got those vines from that tree is a swamp biome. So you've got you know the vines growing on trees, you only get that in the swamp biome. And it's there's a lot of water going through it in small chunks of land, and it's actually a good place to find uh, like... Uh, clay mm -hmm. just beneath the surface of the water um, and there's a couple different biomes uh, so you'll walk around for for an area and you'll get a different biome it's like a desert biome uh, and a, I think there's still a rainforest or a forest biome which is an area of large certain types of trees so this is I am in a snow biome so there's certain different rules that apply um, and it, it just depends on interaction with specific things so it kind of incentivizes in a way like finding a specific biome depending mm -hmm. on if you have some priorities starting out in the game yeah like i want more of this resource generally so kind of like a light dwarf fortress kind of mechanic too or yeah uh there's there's some yeah there's some specific things with that uh wolves that i mentioned earlier only spawn in forest biomes so you're never going to see them unless you get to a forest area right um cactuses you only find growing in a desert biome uh, so there are reasons to wander around and find different things if you want specific materials for specific purposes. Okay. It does encourage you to go out and explore the world a bit more. That's um, great. 